Welcome back to an introduction to computational thinking. As you will remember, we have already looked at decomposition, abstraction and pattern recognition. In this lesson we are going to focus on algorithm design, which is writing step-by-step -step instructions to solve a problem. You may recognize this algorithm. Circle, circle, bigger circle, 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 bigger circle, half circle, half circle, bigger circle, W, W, E, E, E. Now, we don't normally sing out our rhythms in computer studies, so what do we do? Um, one way to do it is flowcharts, and the second that we'll look at is pseudocode. Flowcharts have a series of symbols that they use to represent particular things. A terminator is used at the start and at the end of each procedure. A process is used when you are doing something. So for instance, adding numbers together, perhaps saving a username or generating a map. The third element is a decision box. These are usually yes or no and ask things like, is the memory full? Is a password correct? Or is a number equal to a different number? The last thing is inputs and outputs. So we can input things like usernames, output ages, or output sums of numbers. So let's put this into action. You've got to sort out your dirty washing. So let's do a flow chart. We'll start and we'll pick an item. We'll ask, is the item white? If it is, output it to the whitewash, go to the next one. If not, is it black? Output it to the blackwash, go to the next one. And finally, is it a colour? Output it to the coloured wash. If it's none of these things, it's probably a piece of Lego that got mixed up. So let's try that out. We'll start. We'll pick an item, it's a t-shirt. Is it white? Yes it is. So let's put it an output to the whitewash, put it on the whitewash pile. Try another one. These jeans are dirty. Are they white? No. Are they black? No. Are they coloured? Yes, they are. So they can go down to the coloured wash pile. Now let's apply these to computer studies. We'll look at a flowchart now for comparing passwords and confirming that you've got them both the same. You'll all be familiar with this box whatever accounts you set up. So you need to start, input your first password, input your second password, and then see if they're both the same. If they're not, you have to say they don't match, and then clear the password boxes to start over. If they are the same, you simply store the password, and then you end the program. We'll now move on to pseudocode. So what is pseudocode? It uses short terms or simple English to write code for programs before it's actually made into a particular program language. It is not written in a particular computer language and it's understood by pretty much all programmers and it is a way of providing them with an algorithm for a task. Going back to our password matching, We'll look at this pseudocode. It seems complicated, but we'll step through it. Firstly, we need to input a password. So we make a variable equal to an input. We then input a second password by making the variable password two equal to the second input. Now the decision box is a while loop. This means that as long as it's not true, that's the exclamation mark in front of the equals, we'll do all of these instructions. So in this case, it's not true. So we're going to print passwords do not match. Then we're going to clear the password boxes by allowing the passwords to be empty. And then we have to input them again as part of that loop. See what happens next. Once they're input again, if it's correct, we store the password by making another variable password equal to whatever the value is. And then we print password confirmed. And that's the end of our pseudocode. So in summary, algorithm design approaches a problem logically. It writes step-by-step -step instructions and it uses flowcharts or pseudocode as a way of understanding the problem.